All right, people, we're going to work with some dry ice today. We're going to work with some dry ice. And this dry ice lab that we're going to do is about phase changes. And if you look right here, we have some dry ice sitting down here. And it is super, super cold. Dry ice, that's how cold it is, people. So cold that it just shaking there. All right, now we're going to bust a little bit off. Keep that. And get it back in there. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to have to get some of this dry ice into this uh, flask. And right now, this dry ice is in a solid form. It's in a solid form. So let's figure out... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get this dry ice in here. We're going to end up figuring out how many moles we have. Okay, so I'm going to tear my scale out so now we're not weighing the cup. Okay, and so we're going to get this. Uh, look at it moving on. We're going to get this dry ice here. And we have 42 grams of dry ice. So that's about a mole, right? If dry ice is CO2, what is the molar mass for one mole of CO2? That's right, it's 44 grams. So my next question for you is, if we have 42 grams of dry ice, how many moles of dry ice do I have here? You're right, that's right, at it's about 0.9. We're really close to a mole. now. We're going to take this dry ice and we're going to put it into this uh, Erlenmeyer flask. But there's some water in here and the water is really just going to help us go ahead and start sublimating this really quick. The water will uh, help the solid turn to a gas a little bit more quickly. So let's see if we can get this down into, down in there. Okay, hang on. I'll have to bust that one into a smaller piece. There we go. Get this little guy right here busted up better. Okay, and now Mr. Spear, he's the boss at this. He's going to get the balloon on here. So we have just a little under a mole of carbon dioxide in there, just a little under a mole. And it is turning from a solid directly into a gas. Now, what is the name of that phase change, solid to gas? You're right, it's called sublimation. So let's talk about the conditions in this room. The conditions in the room, we have about an atmosphere of pressure, and the temperature in the room is 296 degrees Kelvin. And we know that we have about 0.9 moles of carbon dioxide. So I want you to predict the volume this balloon would fill to if it was only under that one atmosphere pressure. So you're going to pivnert this. PV equals NRT. For pressure, we're going to use one atmosphere. And for temperature, we're going to use 296. And for our moles, you're going to use 0.9. So go ahead and calculate that. Give me an answer. So, I'm sure your calculations are that the amount of gas we should have in this balloon should be somewhere around 20 liters of gas. Now, obviously, the balloon is not, gonna, is not that big yet, and there are a couple reasons. One, uh, our carbon dioxide hasn't all sublimed, and two, this balloon can't get that big. If I touch the balloon, you can see it's under a lot of pressure. So the pressure inside the balloon, unfortunately, is, is actually larger than one atmosphere because the balloon is, the elasticity of the balloon is creating pressure. But we're going to do some experiments of this balloon right now that I think you're going to like. We took the balloon off of the flask. Mr. Spear is tying it up right now. So what we're going to do is, Remember, this balloon has carbon dioxide. This balloon has air. 
The molar mass of a mole of carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole, and the molar mass of air, if you add up all the gases in air, is 29 grams per mole. So what are we going to expect to see here? And we're kind of breaking physics, but here we go. So it's very obvious that the carbon dioxide is heavier than air. And that is one of the things that makes uh, carbon dioxide a little bit dangerous is that it gathers in low places. And if you work around large amounts of dry ice, you have to be careful because it could act actually suffocate you. We're going to do one other cool thing here with the dry ice. Okay, so the dry ice is sublimating. And we're just going to make that happen a little bit quicker by putting some water on top of it. And here you can clearly see that carbon dioxide is heavier than air uh, because it's falling in the room. And that's our little lab on dry ice. If we sublimated uh, 44 grams of dry ice, we would get 22.4 liters of gas if we were at what conditions? All right, thanks for watching.